Introducing the car we love to hate, which is funny because when it was introduced in 1999 as a 2000 model, dealers couldn't keep them in stock. The factory had special orders coming in left and right, and even some dealers had their program PTs on display at malls, and those vehicles had people circled around them three rows deep. All in all, the Chrysler PT Cruiser was a huge success, with total U.S. sales totaling around 1.1 million vehicles, and that was just the U.S. alone, not figuring worldwide sales. For the most part, the style of the PT Cruiser was after a 1930s Dodge panel delivery truck, and the silhouette was pretty much spot on. In 2005, for the 2006 model year, there was a mid-cycle refresh, which included a redesigned interior and exterior bits, and saw the addition of the two-door convertible. In the early days, the PT was an award winner. Car and Driver named it top on its top 10 best list, and it won North American Car of the Year in 2001. Top year was less friendly. Our convertible was named worst car of the last 20 years. Speaking of our car, we have, for your viewing pleasure or displeasure, a cool vanilla white 2006 PT Cruiser Touring Convertible, complete with pebble beige top and pastel pebble beige leather interior. Its win new pricing is shown to the left. The PT Cruiser was built at the Toluca Car Assembly Plant in Toluca, Mexico for the North American market. Outside of North America, Eurostar Automobile Work in Graz, Austria picked up assembly for the respective markets. Regardless of trim or body style, all PT Cruisers were front-engine, front-wheel drive layout with independent front suspension and single-beam axle and watts linkage at the rear. Power in this car comes from the 2.4-liter dual-overhead KM16 valve inline four-cylinder engine, this engine is constructed of a cast iron block with aluminum heads and is of, of the non-turbocharged, naturally aspirated variety. It features a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio and creates 150 horsepower at 5,100 RPM, 165 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. The PT convertible can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9.6 seconds with a 0 to 100 mile per hour time in a leisurely 30.5 seconds. Quarter mile was reached in 17.2 seconds at 80 miles per hour with its top speed electronically li limited to 120 miles per hour. The convertible features a 15 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.5 gallons per 100 miles driven with a total estimated driving range of 330 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 19 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway, and 22 miles per gallon combined. The PT Cruiser was offered with the option of either automatic or manual gearbox selections, and I am happy to announce that this particular vehicle is equipped with the GetTrag T350 5-speed manual transaxle. The shift action has a nice positive feel to it, and the long chrome stick and cue ball shift knob fall right at hand and feels fantastic. Along the rear of the PT convertible, the car retains its heritage shape similar to that of classic wood panel convertibles where the top stacked and the trunk lid was more of a bottom hinge tailgate. The PT differs in the fact that the trunk lid is a top hinge hatch design. Looking around the, uh, with the top up, we see that we have a full glass rear window with defroster grids and a classic ovid shape to it. The top extends all the way to the luggage door and tail lamps are standard PT Cruiser. Down below, integrated into the bumper, are the rear reflectors and reverse lamps. The car sits on a 103-inch wheelbase with an overall length of 168.9 inches. Along the profile, with the smaller wheelbase and top down, with the exposed sport bar, the PT Cruiser convertible looks unique and pretty sporty. Steering is hydraulically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion with 2.5 turns lock to lock and features a 37.9 foot turning radius. The wheels are standard 16-inch silver painted cast aluminum with P205-55ZR16 tires front and rear. The brakes consist of front disc and rear drums and are assisted by ABS. These brakes can bring the PT Cruiser convertible from 70 miles per hour to zero in 184 feet.
Up front, the PT convertible remains relatively unchanged from its sedan counterpart. Classic 1940s Dodge delivery van styling remains, with a more sporty bumper application with more chiseled edges, housing front round fog lamps. Headlamps, however, are PT Cruiser clear lens halogen headlamps with incandescent bulbs and turn indicators. Alrighty, so we do not have smart key access system. We do have keyless remote entry, however. See here, nice chrome door handles. Classic style push buttons. Nice, generous, wide opening doors. All right, typical PT Cruiser style doors, just a little bit longer due to the two door design. Pretty much standard of this era of Chrysler is pretty much all hard plastics. Different tones, however, you got the pastel be beige and then the dark pastel beige. Chrome door pulls, power door locks, uh, door pocket. And on the dashboard, you have your mirror controls. This vehicle is equipped with the six-way power driver's seat. Does have manual seat back adjust. This is a leather wrapped tilt steering wheel. And inside, of course, we do have the pastel pebble beige leather interior. Overall, the seats are pretty comfortable. They're nice and supportive. However, they do lack some lateral support. You have a cushioned halo style head restraint. Seatbelt guide. They say it's leather. It's actually mostly vinyl. So only this part here and this part here are leather everything else is basically just a high quality vinyl all right now we're going to pan through the interior and show more details as you can see here nice fluid easy to use power assisted steering a very classic four spoke design does have your airbag cover in the middle. As you can see, there's no steering wheel controls to be seen, with the exception of this little lever here, which is your cruise control. Simple to operate. You press this button in to turn it on. Inside your tack, you'll see the cruise light will light up. To set, you will press down. If you hit the brake and cancel to resume it or to accelerate, you'll hit uh, up on it to cancel, pull towards you, and to turn it on and off is that push button again. Pretty simple design. All right, an instrument cluster, as you can see here. Not a full set of gauges, however, they are very easy to read. On the furthest left, you have your fuel gauge. You also have your coolant temperature gauge and your trip computer. Central to that is a 120 mile per hour speedometer with assorted warning lights at the bottom. And on the far right, you have a 7,000 RPM tack. Uh, and it has your mileage. And we're going to pan over the top of the dash. Hard plastics continue, but as you can see here, there's no cracks or anything in it. All right, moving down the center of the dash, satin silver trim. You've also got circular air vents in the middle, classic style Chrysler analog clock, power window controls here. A really nice feature here is your global all up and all down switch. So just press the center button for all up and then press this down and all of the four windows are rolled out at the same time. Moving down, we just have the standard AM FM cassette or CD player, single disc CD player. Uh, and then you have an auxiliary input jack here, which is a nice feature. 
two-stage heated front seats. Here is your power top switch, rear window defogger, four-way flashers, couple blanks, and your passenger side heated seats. Single zone manual climate controls here. They're pretty easy to use, very classic uh, FCA pro or Chrysler products of this era, especially of Daimler Chrysler. Panel distribution here. You have your fan speed here, air conditioning and recirculate, and of course your temperature control here. And moving down further below, we have some storage, 12 volt power point, two cup holders with some coin holders. I love the cue ball on the shifter and it's actually a pretty tall stick. You have an additional cup holder, a little storage tray, floor mounted handbrake. Here's your padded armrest. It does slide out. It is a two level storage. Inside is pretty deep. It kind of reminds me of the Jeep Wrangler TJ. It is pretty deep as stated before. It does have a 12 volt power socket inside. Overall, the interior of the PT Cruiser convertible, um, not the best built. However, this one's actually held up pretty nicely over time, but still, there's a lot of rattles and squeaks and things of like that nature. Overhead, we have a manual dimming mirror. This mirror does have integrated map lights at the bottom. This right here unlatches your top from the windshield header. Sun visors are padded cloth. They are illuminated vanity mirrors. They do swing out, but they do not slide on extension rails. That being said, you have a lot of window left uncovered if needed. Alrighty, let's take a look at the rear seat. I took the seat belt out of the guide However, I find that it's not going to make any difference because the seatbelt is mounted to the driver's seat. So that is really not going to make any difference at all of getting in and out of this back seat. It's going to be hard either way. Down at the base of the seat, you do have a push button that will release the seat back. And there is the back seat of the PT Cruiser convertible. Unlike the sedan, this only seats two across. It is a 50-50 folding and tumbling seat integrated head restraints it does not have the high adjustable head restraints as the sedan does in the back seat as you can see we've got speakers we have a pseudo armrest however as stated before it is all hard plastic so probably not the most comfortable all right grocery bag hook and a little cup holder module comes out, two cup holders and some storage. Relatively flat floor. Not much else to speak of. In the sport bar, you do have your overhead lighting.
All right, now we're gonna take a look at the luggage area. You can pop the luggage door open by double pressing the button on the key fob. On general PG cruisers, there's usually a membrane switch here, but I don't feel one here. It doesn't even feel like it opens. I could be wrong. It could be broken or something. I'm not really sure. You can also use the key. Just stick it in the uh, slot and that'll open it up too. It's on a compound hinge. I'll show you how it opens. Kind of opens out and away from the vehicle. As you can see, the top stows a top. So it's basically like a, um, kind of like a cabinet. Really, you just kind of put your luggage in here. As you can see here, it is a nice load flat floor. You can see the openings for the 50-50 split fold and tumble seats. Inside here, you do have illumination, also a 12 volt power point, jack stowage, One thing I do like about it is, as Doug DeMuro would probably point out, jack stowage is actually a rear view of a PT Cruiser. You see the roll bar. It's a sedan, however, but I kind of like that. Alrighty. To fold the seats is easy. Just these plungers here. Releases the catches. And then we'll go to the front of the vehicle and show how the seats fold. All right, so you just take the seat bottom cushion here, kind of move the seat belt out of the way a little bit. And you can see there's actually a little label here. Pull up on this little loop. So basically you take this little tether and you latch it into here. All right, so here is the view with the seats in the folded and tumbled and locked in place position. As you can see from the trunk, it does extend out very nicely. Alrighty, and this does conclude our in-depth walk around look and review of the 2006 Chrysler PT Cruiser Convertible. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And of course, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram page at brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.